What is up everyone and welcome to the five tips to help you pass the ISC squared certified in cybersecurity exam. Uh, my name is Ektokin and today I'm going to help you better understand what it takes to get this entry level uh, cybersecurity certificate, why it's an important certificate to have, and um, what you can look forward to in the exam and future exams uh, or certificates that you may choose to, to take in your uh, career in cybersecurity. So without further ado, let's get into it. The, um, if you're not familiar with it, ISC Squared is a nonprofit organization uh, that offers globally recognized certificates such as the CISSP, which is a professional certificate. It's, it's the industry standard for any CISO uh, director level type of IT management and information technology. One thing you'll learn is that a lot of folks will say, well, I wanna get into pen testing, I wanna get into red teaming and more of the ethical hacking space. Why do I need um, to be concerned with the ICC squared or CSSP or any of these type of certifications and I would say what ISC squared does differently than a lot of other certifications is it's built around a community um, and that community can help you um, network throughout your career as well as like even if you're getting into red teaming and you're more of a technical minded person than somebody who is a management uh, minded individual then eventually you will probably want to manage a team or think about security in more of a generalistic um, and broad sense. And I think in this case, ISC Squared brings a lot of value. The tips I'm gonna give you are what I followed to study and prepare um, within two weeks. So tip number one is to understand the exam structure. So the, the exam itself is going to be two hours long. There's gonna be a hundred questions, which gives you roughly about a minute for each question. And it's gonna cover five domains of cybersecurity. The first domain you're gonna to wanna to know is security principles. So this is gonna cover IC Squared's code of ethics. This is also gonna cover your standard uh, security principles for what it takes to uh, operate within an organization and with the mindset of security. Domain number two is gonna be business continuity. Uh, disaster recovery and incident response. And this is the smallest portion of the, the course uh, and it takes about 10% of the exam questions. However, it is worth noting that all of these questions are gonna be intermixed within it, the, the different areas of the exam. So uh, there's not gonna be separation of like, oh, we're gonna take questions for domain one, we're gonna take questions for domain two you're gonna be approached with questions from every domain at any point within the test. Uh, so keep that in mind as you prepare for your study um, and you are practicing and testing yourself with uh, against this knowledge is that the best approach is a holistic approach to any of this information. Uh, domain three is gonna cover access controls and concepts and this is about 22%, so a little bit higher than uh, domain two and uh, a little bit less than domain one, but you will see uh, things such as administrative controls, uh, physical controls, and technical controls. So what are the security controls that, <clears throat> that you would wanna use and understand in order to secure um, your organization? Uh, domain number four is network security. And this is the most technical domain of the bunch but it's uh and it's about 24 percent so uh the second highest uh, category in the course and i will say that um there is going to be some memorization with this and i would say it's it's really important to understand um the general network ports understanding the common network ports such as https um uh you know uh, <laughs> See, I'm even blanking on it because it does take a lot of memorization to just kind of know these off of hand. And so like FTT, FTP uh, protocol, uh, you're gonna wanna know what SSH and, and all the various common ones that you may encounter in a network environment or any in network environment really and how security relates to those 
um, those ports and how we approach securing not only that, but also the OSI model and the TCP IP model and the differences between those two and how the different layers are related to one another. Domain five is gonna be security operations. So that's your day-to-day -day, um, security operations. Um, and that's about 18% of the test. That leads me into tip number two, preparing for the exam, right? So you know all five domains, you know how the test is gonna be. You know it's gonna be 100 questions, you're gonna have two hours. And so what should you do to help yourself prepare for this exam? Um, I personally, I, I, took, um, I took the ISC squared self-paced training. Um, I also took um, Mike Chappell's course on ISC squared certified and cybersecurity uh, prep course. And uh, that was on uh, LinkedIn Learning. Also Udemy has a course by Thor Peterson, the complete certified in cybersecurity uh, CC exam preparation course, which, you know, I kind of used a mix of both. I didn't watch all of the videos in all of them, except for the IC squared course, um, which was actually really cool. Uh, IC squared provides a self-paced course that gives you kind of uh, information on um, throughout the entire, like all five domains, uh, but it also gives you um, some, some practical quizzes and then a, a practice exam at the beginning and at the end. So I use kind of a combination of all the practice exams and quizzes from, from each of those courses to help me study for every portion of the exam and really uh, test my knowledge. And each of these instructors had a different approach to the information. Um, but the, uh, there, you know, the through line was that there is consistency in those domains and what is expected on the exam. So I think it's really beneficial to, you know, find one of those courses and see uh, which one of those is, is good for you. Um, I um, watched a few YouTube videos that I will link to in the description um, that are for actually the CISSP that I found to be really helpful um, as I was going through these courses and in between courses to help me prepare uh, for the exam because essentially this exam is like the mini boss before the dungeon boss. Um, it is an entry level course but it's going to cover a lot of the same material fundamentally that you'll see in the CISSP. Tip number three, I would say if you can uh, try to find, if you, if, you, if you don't already work in this space um, in IT or in um, uh, as a security analyst or something of that of that function, um, try to reach out to somebody who works there and ask them some questions about what their experience has been with cybersecurity. And um, try to really network and find somebody who can give you some practical applications, um, even outside of this, because that will really help you build a framework for how you will approach this kind of thing in your career. And maybe you'll make a relationship with someone who can help you uh, further, career, uh, further your career um, after you've taken this exam. Uh, tip number four is going to be, um, and I, I touched on these in my other tips, was just you know going through those courses and after you uh, after you feel that you have a good understanding of the material, is take the court the practice quizzes and practice exams as many as times as you can. Take notes of the questions you got wrong, and go back and really do your due diligence and research. Um, the information behind the answers that you got wrong and try to familiarize yourself because at the end of the day You're not going to see the questions in those practice exams on the test But it's going to help really test yourself and prepare your mindset to be questioned um, On that material it is a multi multiple choice exam again, so there's not going to be any labs. Um, there's not going to be any um practical examination like you would see in the OSAP, uh, the OSCP where you're gonna, you know, you where you have to hack a certain number of machines and then write a report. Um, again, this is a very entry level exam, uh, which leads me to tip number five. Don't use brain dumps. Don't use brain dumps. They're a waste of fucking time. Everybody knows it, but you're going to miss out on the opportunity to actually use the information that's gonna be useful in your career after you pass the exam. 
And the thing is, it's it's just not it's not worth it not to learn the material because if you're serious about this industry about being uh, even an ethical hacker and you're like oh that's just my mindset you know I want to find the fastest way to do anything people are gonna the people you're gonna interview with the people you're gonna uh, mentor with they're gonna realize that oh yeah they're certified in this but it doesn't seem like they actually have any of the knowledge or that they know how to apply any of this information because when you just, when you memorize the information, all it does is just limit your ability to actually be able to conversate about something that's, you know, practical in the industry. So um, that's my last tip is, is learn the information because once you pass this exam, you're gonna be able to become a member of IC Squared, which will give you uh, the opportunity to interface with other professionals in the field and grow your career. And then uh, also uh, with this type of exam and people may say like, oh, you know, like it's, do I even need to take it? I think it's worth it because even though this, this particular certificate may not land you jobs necessarily, I think it, it shows to employers that like maybe you are studying for the CISSP and you don't yet have enough experience to to qualify for uh, a full CISSP, but maybe you're at the associate level and you have a certificate, or maybe you're more interested in, in the OSCP and you really wanna do that. Um, and you want to spend more of, your, more of that energy uh, going towards a pen test type of examination. Well, it only helps you to take an exam that you can legitimately spend you know, if you have the time, if you schedule out your time properly um, and you study and you set aside the time uh, to do, you know, one or two hours a day at least, um, then you're going to have the opportunity to have a certificate that you um, can show employers that you're, you're working towards a higher level certificate and that you've already taken that step to move from, you know, just general IT or information technology, but that you are also interested in cybersecurity and that's where your focus is. So I think it's only to your benefit to take this certificate and see you know, where it might lead and who you may be able to interface because of the doors that it will open. So that's my five tips for how to study, prepare, and pass the ISC Squared Certified in Cybersecurity. Uh, my name again is Ectokin. If you like this uh, information and found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel, uh, leave a comment, uh, and learn it. Worth it. That's all I have. Peace.